Hey, what is going on, guys? It's Stupid Player Negative AE, and welcome back to Steins Gate. We are on the top of Radicon. We have an important decision to make. I don't know if it's going to be soon, but um, we're going to have to decide between Maori and Kudasu eventually. <laughs> I'm on the roof of Radicon after going 56 hours with two time leaps. Really, I'm going to do both of them because I'm I want to see the endings for both, but it's a crazy decision to have to make. I lean against the wire fence and stretch out my legs as I look at the sky. I wanted more time to think. That's why I came back. Last time I spent two days refusing to face reality. But that is no longer an option now that I've confirmed Mayori's death. This time I need to reach a decision. But how? This equation has no solution. No matter what choice I make, someone dies. From a purely alter, alt, utilitarian viewpoint, I should choose the beta world line, where CERN never creates a dystopia. Yes. But it's not that simple. Not for me. I understand. There must be some other way. Especially since, like, how helpful Kudasu has been. According to Suzuha, 2010 is a point of great divergence in the attractor field level. Dude, what if we made it to freaking attractor field freaking C dude what what about that it might take more work but dude that's that's the dream maybe no one dies on C according <laughs> I don't know that's a lot more work that you have to put on yourself according to Susa 2010 at the attractor field level I think the divergence had already commenced by the time I sent the email reporting Kodosu's death so when did divergence begin I can't say for sure, but I think it was the moment we completed the phone wave named Subject to Change. And that was around the middle of July. Dara and I deemed it a failure right after completion. By the time Kudasu was killed, there was already a huge divergence at the attractor field level. Now that I think about it, reading Steiner activated that day when I sent the email that started it all. At that moment, every pedestrian and vehicle on the main street of Akiba suddenly vanished. That feels so long ago. But now I can finally explain it. That was the m moment I moved to the Alpha World Line. On the Beta World Line, where this all began, Suzuha didn't arrive in her time machine. Dr. Nakabashi's conference went ahead as planned, and the flow of tourists and shoppers through Akiba was unimpeded. But when I sent the D-mail, events changed on a huge scale, from my perspective at least. On the current world line, Suzuha crashed her time machine into the roof of Radikan. Nakabashi's presentation was cancelled, and this part of Akiba was closed to traffic. Because I was out on the street when the world line changed, it appeared to me as if thousands of people had suddenly vanished. The truth is that they were never there to begin with like a magician's trick. It's so obvious once you understand how it works. The real problem is the timing of the demon. I moved to the Alpha world line after Kudasu died. If I had sent the demon before she died, then I might s still have been able to intervene, even now on this world line. That's true. Yeah, he's right. But no, that would de defy causality. I sent that demo because I saw Kudusu's body. That's the way it had it has to be. Who killed her anyway? I still don't know. I wonder if we'll find that out. It definitely wasn't suicide. And what if I identify the murderer and send them a demo warning them off? Would that prevent her death? Yes. Unless it was me from the future. Wouldn't that be a twist? I'm calling it me from the future. Something happens where I have to kill Kodosu and it's the only way that Maori lives or some shit. I don't know. That's weird though. That would be weird. I mean, no one has tried to kill her on this world line, have they? Maybe there's a chance. However, to send that D-mail, I would first have to move to the beta world line. The more I think about it, the more futile it seems. I've already seen Maori die countless times. Everything I tried to prevent Everything I tried to prevent it failed. I understand it all too well. 
When fate wants someone dead, there's nothing can stop it. I can't save Kudasu. Uh, there you are. <sighs> Let's tell her. I thought I was alone, but it seems that I was wrong. So, she's... Oh, my goodness. I mean... Mm. That is rough. I turn around to see Kudusi standing in the open door. I avert my eyes. I can't look her in the face. Not now. What are you doing here? Nothing. How did you know I was here? You said you wanted to be alone. I ran the numbers and concluded that I had the greatest possibility of finding you here. Don't leave me alone. You don't have to look for me. I'm not a lost little boy. Hey, is that how you treat someone who's worried about you? No, not that I'm worried about you or anything. Right after she gets herself flustered, Kudusu sighs and puts on a serious expression. Is it just me or is that everything that like Kudusu says in this form? Like if you put Baka at the end of it, it sounds so funny to me. I was going to leave you alone at first. But you've been acting weird the last couple days. I mean, you're always weird, but more than usual. You look like a kid forced you. <laughs> you look like a kid forced to eat crappy oatmeal. What happened? Nothing. Then why did you cancel the cracking of CERN? You're the one who said we shouldn't. Oh, so you're afraid of triggering <laughs> arrest flags. I get it. You should praise me for obeying the law for a change. That's not like you at all. What happened to your ego? What happened to the insane mad scientist Ho Yin Kyo? To hell with my ego. This time it's not that simple. I forced my ego on others before. Suzuha, Ferris, Lukaku. I sacrificed their dreams for the sake of my goal. I justified it by telling myself that it was necessary to save Maori. I weighed their suffering against the alternative and made my self-righteous choice. But this time, the alternatives are impossible to compare. I have to choose which friend to let die. It would be so much easier if I knew what was right. Which friend to let die? What are you talking about? I'm just a student, Christina. You know? The insane mad scientist Hoi and Kyoma? That's just a fantasy. A character I made up. I bet you had no idea. Um, I may have figured that out when we first met. When we first met. What if I hadn't found Kodosu's body back then? Let's try imagining that situation. If I hadn't seen Kodosu dead, I wouldn't have interrogated her before the seminar ATF. Without hearing me call her a zombie, she wouldn't have taken an interest in me. She wouldn't have come to the lab. Ultimately, we would never have built the time life machine, leaving me without the means to save Mayori. And of course, Kurusu would not have become our friend. We would not be as close as we are right now. Tell me, Okabe, what do you mean? I can't meet her questioning gaze. Do I have to tell you? You never hesitated to ask me for help before. Don't hold back now. That's not what this is about. And then prepare yourself. This will be interesting to see how she takes it. What I'm about to tell you is the absolute truth. And it could also be your death sentence. 
Kudasu's voice cracks a little. Remember what I told you before? When we delete the D-mail from CERN's database, we'll reach the beta world line where Maori doesn't die. And where CERN doesn't take over the world. Right. Everyone lives. Everyone is free. You made it sound perfect. Perfect. It's anything but. I showed you the first email, didn't I? The one that started it all? On the beta world line, the events described in that email actually happened. Kurusu is a genius. I have no doubt that she understands. Kurusu. On the beta world line, you die on July 28th. And according to the attractor field model, nothing could prevent that from happening. If I want to save Mayori, I have no choice but to let you die. That's a weird way to put it. It's a very weird way to put I, I would word it differently if that was me. But it's true. It's, it's not false. It's just a weird way to word it. Kudisu says nothing. What expression is she making now? I reluctantly sneak a look at her face. That's exactly what I thought she would do. Her eyes look distant. I see neither fear nor sadness in her face. She seems accepting. Kurusu is always like this. Always calm, no matter what. It's hard to believe she's younger than me. Her soft chestnut hair blows in the wind. She lifts a hand to hold it down. Hey, Okabe. How credible do you find this attractor field model? Credible? It's all secondhand info from John Titor. Amane san, isn't it? I get that it's the accepted model in 2036. But how exactly did scientists prove the existence of attractor fields? Are you trying to say that the model may be wrong? But I know for certain that convergence exists. I've experienced it firsthand. Even if they're right about convergence, what about the relationship between world lines? The moment I change world lines, everything is reconstructed. Past, present, future. But that's just from your perspective, Okabe. Once you go to the beta world line, the me that your brain perceives will die. In other words, your perspective will have chosen the world line where I die instead of the one where I don't. However, why can't your why can't the world your brain perceives be different from the world my brain perceives? Forgot her specialty was neuroscience. I'm trying to think about what she just said. I'm sorry. That's what I. That's what I was trying to think about, and he just said it. That's great. That's exactly what I was gonna ask. Like trains, maybe. I hope so. Trains. Um. Let me give you an easy example. Kurisu takes out her phone and starts fiddling with it. If I want to take a train from Akiba to Yokohama, which route should I use? I didn't know you were a rail fan. I'm pretty sure I already know what that means. Um, but I'll check anyway. Uh, tips. Okay. Yeah. It's just an example, jeez. You, you choose to take the Yamano line to Tokyo Station, then transfer to the Tokido Main Line for the rest of your trip. Kurusu keeps talking as she looks at her phone. 
apparently reading off itinerary. But I take the Yama note line to Osaki and then transfer to the Shonen Shinjuku line. Another person, say, Hashida-san, might decide to take the Ken Keihin Tokuko line for some reason. They're making me work, dude. And Mayori might ride the Shinkansen from Tokyo. You and I ride the same train until Tokyo Station, but from there, we ride different lines, while still aiming for the same destination. That applies to the universe? You're claiming the existence of parallel worlds? So dimensions. I like to use my imagination too, sometimes. But where's the proof that there's only one world? Suzuha has said so. And then there's reading Steiner. In other words, an unknown time traveler and your unexplainable superpower. But we knew Suzuha. There's no way to prove that she was Hashida's daughter, or anything she said about 2036 either. Not without going there for ourselves. And if reading Steiner is what you say, then it means that your subjective experience influences the memories of every single human being. That's completely absurd, Okabe. If that's true, then you're literally a god. But there are no gods in reality. The world doesn't revolve around you. It's just your main, your brain, making you believe it does. If that makes you this world's god, then I must be a god too. My brain is just as big as yours. What are you trying to say? Let's say you choose the world line where I die. That doesn't mean I have to do the same. The fact is that I am standing here right now, observing the world with my own subjectivity. I already exist on a world line where I don't die. Even if your perspective shifts to the beta world line, my perspective might remain here. It's a question of where the soul lies, and I won't let you have your way with my soul. No true scientist would accept the hypothesis that flimsy. But there's a chance I'm right. So you have nothing to worry about. Kurusu smiles. How can she smile? I just told her that she's gonna die. The problem is that you don't want to let me die, right? But if my hypothesis is correct, I'll still be alive on another possible world line. So there's no reason to be afraid. <laughs> it's just a hypothesis. The same is true of attractor fields. It hasn't been proven. Even if someone did prove it by 2036, it doesn't help us here in the present. In other words, anything is possible. Why is this moment so sad? I, f I, I feel more sad in this moment than I do for most... <laughs> this is a sad moment. Kurusu turns her back to me after finishing. It's an armchair theory. A daring armchair theory that could quite possibly render meaningless everything I've done up until now. How can Kurusu stay so calm? She's just an 18 year old girl. You really don't have to worry about me, Okabe. It would just hurt my pride if you did. <laughs> oh, that was. Well voice acted. Don't say it like that. I mean, I would answer this. Is answering this change? Oh my goodness. I would totally answer this. We're answering it. Mushy, mushy. Mushy, mushy. 
Ah. Mayurika. Mayuri. Jesus. Uh. Yeah. Displayed on the screen is Mayuri's face, devoid of its usual brightness for some reason. Donsta. What's wrong? Uh, I've heard from Daru-kun that Okurin's been acting kind of strange. Mayushi was so preoccupied with Komima she didn't really notice. Even though she usually notices right away when Okurin's not happy. I'm sorry, Okurin. Don't apologize. You've done nothing wrong. Um, did something happen? Oh, goody. I can't tell her. I can't. I've kept it a secret from her all this time. That's the way it has to be. <laughs> There's nothing wrong. Oh. Man, I feel like we should just tell Maori things. I feel like she'd be understanding if we just gave her a chance. Yeah. See? You know, you used to talk to Mayushi about a lot of things. Remember? Like, um, the organization's four leaders, uh, their names are Back Turkish Virginian Bump Balloon Drag Queen and Wide Eyed Gore, right? <laughs> Black tortoise from Rillian Bird, Blue Dragon, and White Tiger. Yeah, that. You know, it was really fun talking to Okurin about stuff like that. But now... Um, Okurin, if... Maybe she's a burden, just say so, okay? What? I... I never... Uh, hey, I'm hanging up now. If you feel like talking to Mayushi about anything, just call, okay? She hung up on me. What did Mayori say? How are you a burden? Don't say things like that, damn it. Why is she only serious at times like this? A burden, huh? I never felt Mayori was a burden. Not once. Then you should tell her that. Maybe it wasn't a good idea to leave Mayori in the dark. I agree. She never looks like she's thinking anything, and yet she saw my doubt. Either way, I can't tell her the truth. I don't understand why. Okabe. Okabe. Kurisu sighs and then glares at me. The old you wouldn't have worried about anything. Anyway, you should go see Mayori. I'm sure she has a lot to say. She's right. Even if I don't tell Mayori the truth, I need to at least tell her something. I'll postpone my decision and go see Mayori. It's afternoon on the first day of Komima, and the crowds are finally beginning to th thin out. Of course, the industry booths and cosplay area are still packed, but at least I don't have to sit in a line to get in. I've been trying to get in touch with Mayor for a while now, but she hasn't responded. I checked with Daru, but he hasn't seen her today either. Cosplay ends at 4 p.m. I focus on searching the cosplay area until then, but I still can't find her. Maybe she finished early and went home. I try calling her home. No luck. They haven't seen her since she left this morning. Where is she? I'm always afraid that she'll disappear the second I take my eyes off her. It's been like that ever since she lost her grandmother. Maybe it's just my imagination. We've been so close for so long. I saw Maori at her weakest and most vulnerable. Maybe that has made me overprotective. But I don't care how other people see us. 
I just can't leave Maori alone. I step into the cemetery. The final resting place of Maori's beloved grandmother. When was the last time I came here? For about a year after Maori became my hostage, I'd periodically accompany her here. But I don't think I've been here since I entered high school. So it's been about three or four years. As I get closer to Maori's grandmother's grave, I begin to hear a voice. It's Maori. I'd recognize her voice anywhere. Is she at the grave instead of Komima? That's creepy. I mean, it's cute, kind of, because it's her grandmother. Why not, I don't know. Why would you not just tell people, like, hey, I'm gonna go visit my relative that I loved? Sounds like she's, I guess she'd be embarrassed, I don't know, I don't know. I approach quietly. Okay. Mary is standing there, talking to the grave. What a relief. She hasn't disappeared. I decide to watch silently from a short distance away. I'm having scary dreams lately. For a second, I wonder if she's learned to commune with the dead, but no, she's just talking to herself. What? What? What if she has reading Steiner too? I swear I've said that before. This game just hits you with the twists at the end, dude. That is so weird. Is she inheriting memories like I do? And, you know, they always end the same way. Maybe she crying and Okudin comes to save me. Maybe she tries to say thank you, Okudin, but Okudin can't hear my voice. He holds Mayushi and makes a very sad face like he's going to cry, but he never does, you know? I can tell he's forcing himself not to cry. Come to think of it, both Ferris and the Kaka remember the memories from before the past changed. I used to think that memories couldn't be shared between world lines. I used to think that I was the exception with reading Steiner. But maybe that's not the case. Maybe everyone has the same power, and the only difference is how strong it is. Maybe reading Steiner is nothing special after all. It makes Mayushi even more sad. I try to say, sorry, sorry, but he still can't hear. And that's when I wake up. Why am I having these dreams? I've failed so many times to save her. I've watched her die again and again. Everything I've done has been to prevent that from happening. And yet, have the memories of those deaths been tormenting her as she sleeps? I bite my lip in frustration. I still have a terrible decision to make. Do I save Maori, or do I save Kudusu? There's no perfect ending here can't save them both. It's one or the other. If I choose Kudasu, then Maori's dreams will become reality. I don't want Maori to feel any pain. Until now, I've only thought of saving her. That is my goal. But at the same time, I can't let Kudasu die. Again, my thoughts hit the same dead end. Maori hasn't noticed me yet. She's still staring at the sky, just as she was on the day I took her hostage. 
She's talking to her grandmother in heaven. Oh, right, we have a lot more lab mems now, you know? There's Chris Chan, Moeka san, Luka kun, and Ferris chan. Oh, there's also Suzu san, but she moved away. That makes eight of us. It's really amazing. On this world line, they all become lab mems. However, not a single one of them is sent a email. You know, it was just Okurin and Mayushi at first. Back then, Okurin seemed kind of bored most of the time. But now he's having so much fun. Is that how she sees it? Well, she's not wrong. She really does know me, doesn't she? And that makes Mayushi happy too. It's so busy, but it's really exciting. Especially now that Christian is here. She's really smart, you know? She's got a paper published in a famous magazine. Mayushi really admires her. She even made a time machine. Oh, but can't forget Okunin and Darukun helped too. Then Mayori falls silent. Her gaze becomes distant. She stands still and looks up to the sky. What could she be thinking? But, you know, sometimes I remember. Back when it was just the two of us. When Mayushi had only become Okurin's hostage. I'd go to the lab after school, but Okurin wouldn't be there. So I tidied up the room and decorate it with cute things. And then Okurin would finally show up a little later. Maybe she would say, welcome back. But instead of saying, I'm back, Okurin would say, good work. Like a big boss or something. Every day, we'd spend a few hours just hanging out, doing nothing. And then we'd go home together. We didn't talk much, but it wasn't bad. We were just there together, you know? We'd sit next to each other on the sofa. Okurin would work on his big plans and Mayushi would read a manga or play games. And sometimes we'd have a snack together. It was so nice and relaxing. I never wanted to leave. I'd start feeling like a real hostage. I'd laugh, hee hee hee, to myself. And then Okurin would turn to me and say, I remember. It was four months ago, still spring. The lab wasn't as lively as it was as it is now. It was an isolated bubble of slow moving time. Did something good happen? It, yep. Well, not really, but kinda. It must have been an illusion. We we could be under attack from the illusion conductor, one of the organization's feared agents. Uh, gotta be careful then. But, you know, I'm sure that Mr. Illusion Kid Hugger. <laughs> conductor, not Kid Hugger. I'm sure he's not a bad guy. It was nothing, just meaningless chatter to pass the time. I felt so happy there. So happy I could cry. I wanted to stay like that forever. But that doesn't mean I don't like the way or how things are now, okay? Mary shakes her head in denial. Finally, she stops looking up at the sky and bows her head instead. You know, I haven't talked to Okurin much lately. Maybe Mayushi's getting a little lonely. It's true, I haven't had time to talk to her lately. But that's because I've been fighting to prevent her death and not telling her about her death. I mean, I, I understand, but like, we never even gave her a chance. 
to keep her dreams from coming true. Also that Mayori will keep smiling. I never again want to see her cry like she did on that day when her grandmother died. But you know, I don't want to be a burden on Okari. That word again. Burden. I never thought of her as a burden. Maybe she's just one big nuisance, isn't she? Granny. Mary lifts her face once more. I can't stay like this forever, can I? Of course you can. When I finally speak to Mayori, she turns my way with a surprised expression. Her face is so soft, so innocent. Slowly, her lips curve into a smile. It's Okarin! Wow! How'd you know I was here? I always know where my hostage is. Hostage. You cannot escape my grasp. Not ever. Oh. But don't wear yourself out, okay? Maybe she's a little worried. Hoin Kyoma is not as so weak as to require your concern. When the time comes, I'll tell you everything. Huh? So stay with me until then. Like you always have. Okay. Mary stands up and turns to the grave once more. As an offering, she leaves a brand new white lily as well as some d dango dumplings. Dango dumplings. Uh, let's head back, Okarin. Shouldn't we go get some dango for ourselves first? Back when we used to visit the cemetery together, it was part of our daily routine to eat dango on the way back. <laughs> of course. I'm gonna end the episode here. This feels like a, a stop, but I'm gonna record another one, so I'll be back. Thank you guys so much for watching. If you guys enjoyed today's episode, leave a like uh, and subscribe if necessary. Uh, I've been trying to, I know it's a little late, but I'm trying to make myself a better reader, if that makes any sense, like, um, more emotion, I guess, and, and, cause I kind of just read monotone, uh, and I know it's not too much of an improvement, but I'm getting there, so, I don't know, hopefully it's better this time around, hope you guys are having the best rest of your day, and peace out, you guys.